This afternoon, I'm chatting to, to Cindy from BDO. And Cindy, I'm really, really glad that you've given us some time. This, I think, is going to be the beginning of a discussion that's going to create um, probably a lot more engagement and, and, and discussion from students than most of the rest of my posts. Because yeah. when I post stuff <laughs> on accounting and auditing, they're all like boring. Uh, but when I post stuff based on recruitment and jobs and articles, then everybody's interested. So, awesome. <laughs> That's you're good gonna news. Be, <laughs> you're going to be really, really popular today. So if you can give us a little bit of an introduction to, to yourself um, and kind of what, what, what we're going to be chatting about, and then we'll get into some questions, some burning questions that I know students have when it comes to doing articles and some questions that you know students have and you know that your side has when it comes to yeah. so thank you very much for cool. your time this afternoon I no, really it's an absolute pleasure <laughs> thanks so much for having me yeah so as you said my name is cindy um i work at bdo in the people and culture team which in most companies is also known as the human resources division but we call it people and culture because our firm is all about the people that we employ and the culture that we create for them to to thrive in. And so, yeah, I've been at um, BDO for sure a little while now. And prior to that, I was at one of the big four. So okay. I've worked in the, the recruiting space um, at audit firms for about 13 years. Oh, wow. That makes me, yeah. makes me sound really old. No, 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 no <laughs> but, experience. You're experienced. Experienced, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I think, I think during that time, I've experienced both sides of, of the playing field, if you want to call it that, from bigger firms to smaller firms. Well, I suppose we're not really small anymore, but no, no, no. Um, but yeah, and and also just seen a lot of good CVs in the years and seen a lot of bad CVs in the years. And so hopefully we'll be able to just impart a little bit of what I've learned along the way that stands yeah. out to recruiters, not just in your CV, but also mm. in how you present yourself. And then how that relates into having a successful three years with a firm and building a career on that mm. solid foundation. So yeah, I'm yeah. interested to, to have this chat with you. Awesome. Just to clarify, um, in terms of your qualifications, you are not a not a CPA. No. Okay. <laughs> so I went um, I went off to varsity thinking, oh, I didn't do accounting at school. Let me give it a bash in first year. Well, yeah. Um, enrolled for a BCom. Did not enjoy accounting. <laughs> so I ended up. It's it's a weird story. I ended up majoring in. Um, information systems and okay. commercial law. So I got into labor law through that, to oh, honors wow. in an enterprise management course, and then ended up in HR with a passion for recruiting. Okay. Um, but, I think, but I think what is the link there is that recruiting and the, the systems that we use are very mm. information systems driven. Mm. So it's quite a um, process driven space, mm. um, but I also just love people. And I, I love speaking to people. So I get yeah. to do what I love every day. Awesome. So I think it's, it's, it's good to note that because um, depending, yeah. obviously, depending on the size of the firm and the infrastructure of the firm, um, when you're applying for articles, it's not necessarily going to be an accountant who's looking at your CV. It's Definitely. not necessarily going to be a, an accountant who's going to give you the interview. So um, I, I kind of just want to clarify that because I think yeah. it's easy, you know, and as a student, if you've never worked, you know, if you, you don't have work experience, you don't really understand exactly yeah. what HR does and what you know, policies, processes, applications, et cetera, et cetera. So mm. um, it's, it's, it's good to note, you know, you need to consider that it's not going to necessarily be an accountant who's looking at your, who's looking at your, at, at your CV. So Definitely. first question for you yes, um, go for it. <laughs> is uh, I have a lot of students um, based on circumstances and mm. based on stuff who, who ask me, should I start my articles while I'm studying? Beginning their studies, <laughs> finishing degree, starting article, I'm starting CTA. Starting CTA, CTA repeating CTA. CTA. What's cool. your advice? Take. What's your take <laughs> on that? Yeah, so I mean, I think different firms have different policies and most, if not all of the big four firms in all of the different regions would insist on having guys that have passed CTA. Yeah. And... I'll explain why in a little bit. Then there are other firms that where possible, 100% would love to take everyone that's past CTA and only have an intake that, that is fully qualified from that perspective up to your yeah. CTA. Um, but it's not always possible because yeah. of numbers. You know, when you're stuck in 
a smaller region or a smaller office. Yes. They sometimes just don't have the, the qualified yeah. people at their disposal to choose from. Yeah. So there are options there. And then the really small firms would consider people straight out of grade 12, those, yes. those first year yeah. Yeah. Um, UNISA students as well. Yeah. And so I'll speak to each one of those options, but ultimately what you need to know if you are considering this is that if at all you have the opportunity to study full time, I would always recommend this. And I understand that it's not always possible for everyone. Yeah, um, yeah. Not everyone has the, the you know, financial support, the family support. Um, yeah, and so it's not, not an option. And then 100%, try, Which apply means, everywhere right? to get your articles. What we kind of feel is that if we do take on people um, that have not passed their CTA successfully, we would prefer someone who's at least attempted it once full time yeah. because they've got a solid understanding of what it yeah. takes, but yeah. also they've got a bit of knowledge around the content. And so mm. they know how many hours it takes <laughs> to get yeah. through all the work. Yeah. Um, and, and I always say to students that are asking to join us, and study. Okay, so imagine the amount of work you're putting in now, the number of hours. Now put an eight to 10 hour day on top of that, because sometimes work, there's going to be overtime, there's going yeah. to be deadlines. And where are you going to find the time to do those studies? You know, your weekends are only so long. So if you, if you feel that you can do that 100%, or if you feel that you don't have any other option, yes. 100%, you can find a place. You can find a firm to take you in and make you part of their family and to support you. Um, but if you have the option not to, I would strongly encourage you to focus on your studies. In fact, one of my friends studied, um, I hope she doesn't mind me telling you her story, but <laughs> she, she did this. She did her part-time studies and, and worked and she had so many challenges. She said to me once, you can't be a good student and a good employee at the same time. Okay. And so she then applied to her firm for a sabbatical, took time off, went back to do it full time yeah. and passed. She's now an audit manager. Yeah. She's doing so well. But it is hard. It's, it's a hard juggling act. I so yeah, I, that would be my, my take yeah. on it. I, I, I have possible. to agree with you. I think um, I, I'm sort of having, I'm trying to have the same discussion with everybody I talk to. So I keep asking mm. the same question because um, when you're making decisions, you want as many bits of input as possible, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. And so, so, okay. so that's cool. Um, I, I absolutely have to agree with you. And I think um, I, really, I really like the, the way you say that is it's very difficult to be a good student, especially a good CTA student mm. and a good employee. And again, especially an article clerk uh, yeah. at the same time, because um, you know, for example, like UNISA, for example, indicates in their, in their study guides and their tutorial matter that you need about 30 hours a week of studying for CTA. On top of your 40 plus hours and work. Yeah, a work week is 40 <laughs> hours. So you're basically, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're basically <laughs> looking at, you know, almost two full-time jobs. Mm. And it's how, really tough. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really tough to do. So I think, you know, students... Um, yeah, students are like, it's not, you know, it's not fair and, 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 and I, I, I totally understand all sides of the discussion, but I think mm. it's important, you know, from the student's benefit is the likelihood mm. of you passing CTA um, is very, very low uh, yeah. if you, you know, if, if you're studying at the same time and, you know, it not is. that, but your sanity levels. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely your mental health. <laughs> So I, I also want to not discourage those that have to, that have no option, because I yes. have seen people yes, do it. it. I'm not saying it's impossible. No. It, it totally is. Um, but That's I think you just got to go into it with open eyes, yes. understanding what yeah. you're getting yourself it into. Is. It is hard. And I think it's also, you know, think of it, consider it. And, you know, yeah. I also say to, to my students, um, don't just let life happen to you. Um, mm. If that your consideration that's also why i want to have yeah. these discussions is you, you're thinking okay 2021 i have to or i'm going to start my articles i'm going to start cta yeah. or whatever the case is um let's do some planning now you know try and figure out how to structure your family life so that there's yeah. less drama that your family understands Definitely. your expectations uh you know other responsibilities and obligations the more that you can plan and think about this in advance um, yeah. that your family, friends, community understands what to expect from you. The support the less system, you're gonna yeah. Find, uh, yeah, your support system, as mm. well as your academic support. You know, maybe you've Definitely. studied completely on your own up to now and you didn't need support or classes or a community, whatever the case is. But mm. uh, having someone explain something to you versus you trying to figure it out yourself can save a lot of time. So, you know, that might Definitely. be a consideration as well. So I totally agree with yeah. you. Um, not everyone has the 
benefit or has the privilege of being able to go, I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah. We have to do what we have to do. But the more Definitely. you're aware of the challenges, the more you can, the more you can address this, the more you And I think it's, it's also it. important to see it from the other side. So as an employer, you know, um, it's, it's sometimes we have students say, well, why can't you just employ me while I'm studying, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and, and there's financial considerations that a firm needs to take. Yeah. So every time and, and time considerations. So let's say, let's, you know, say you had an intake of 10 trainees and eight were studying CTA, your 80% of your workforce yes. is gone for a month or two of the year for All studies. at the same time. All at the same <laughs> time. And often that coincides sides with our busy season so you've got that time consideration from a planner point of view but then you also have that financial impact that you're paying people to study even and yeah. sometimes do sometimes don't but you've got to consider that as well so mm. it really is a balance and having come from an environment where I worked previously where they didn't take anyone with CTA I'm really glad that that we are able to it's you know, in certain circumstances, because I've seen some of our best trainees turn into our best audit managers yeah. who came in and, and did CTA sometimes twice with us in their first and yeah. second year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, as a recruiter, I love seeing people that can show me that they've got strengths outside of their academics. Yeah. And so when we're looking at people for a situation like that, for them to join us and, and to repeat their CTA, you know, I want to see all those other strengths that you're going to bring mm. to the table, the people mm. skills, the client relationships that you're going to be building. And you've got to bring that to the party for me to buy into wanting to support mm. you and to take mm. you on um, this journey while you study. So yeah. I think it's also important if you are in that situation and if you know that you have to work to support yourself financially, what else do you bring to the to the table, so to speak, for the firm? Mm. Um, and that's what you need to sell in the interview process. And maybe we're jumping a bit ahead now, but I think that's important to know. Yeah. Okay. So so that, that does flow nicely into... Yeah. Um, into into our discussion um when you're looking at cvs you know what is it that stands out and i think um you know two, two specific things that 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 i want to deal with one is that when you're studying and the focus of your studying and the focus of your syllabus in in, in accounting at the moment which i think is a bit unfortunate but anyway um <laughs> is purely technical you know is mm. like it's all theory all technical so it's very uh, it's very easy to fall into the trap as a student of thinking that, you know, your biggest value that you're going to bring to the firm is your ability to do a depreciation calculation. You know? <laughs> yep. um, and your, you know, your, your memory of uh, laws and regulations and, and all the rest of that. Okay. Very easy yeah. to fall into because that's all you study. That's what you focus yeah. on. Fine. Um, so the, from your perspective, the value, the necessity for non-technical skills, Mm. What it's huge feel? yeah so per it's percentage huge. wise like <laughs> so let me say value let me say, where does it technical <laughs> land so let me say it this way is yes in first year your technical knowledge is what you're relied on our first year trainees come fresh out of cta having just done itc they're the most technically savvy people in our business possibly and more then, than the partners actually 100 100 <laughs> So they, the first years are relied on for that. So yeah. in your first year, it is critical. Yeah. And then it's good that you have all those soft skills. But as you move up through the ranks, we rely, like I said, on the first year. So that knowledge of yours becomes a little less, it's still relevant, but yeah. your team leading skills yeah. as a second and third year start yeah. taking over because now you're managing a group of people yeah. and that's critical as well as the technical stuff. I'm, yeah. saying, I'm not yeah. saying it's not. No, 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 but, but your, your ability to communicate with the client professionally, mm. to deliver on deadline, to manage, you know, situations when they start going wrong. How do you react when the team might not be pulling their weight? All those sorts of more nuanced soft skills. Mm. And, and we call them soft skills, but they're really the tough skills. Know, and no one I teaches agree. you in varsity. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> those, those become more and more important yeah. um, as you progress through your career. So I think as a student, when we're sitting in that interview room with you, Obviously, your technical ability is, is key, yeah. but we also need to see that there's some kind of growth potential in mm. you for all those other things. Yeah. And I think a big one is, is, you know, being a problem solver. It's all very well to sit in at your books and to mm. study rote learning, whatever you need to know. But when you're in a real life client example, how are you going to deal with it? How mm. are you actually going to apply what you know? Um, 
research and consult with the people that you need to, but come to them with possible solutions. Mm. And I think that's something that our managers always, you know, say is a great trainee will come to you saying, I've got this problem. I've thought about it and this is how I propose we do it. What do you think? I want your yeah. input versus yeah. someone who just comes and says, tell me what to help. do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's key. Um, yeah. So yeah, they're both important. And I think when we look at our intake as a whole, I try and make sure that yes, I've got, a couple of those highly, highly skilled, academically smart people who might be massive introverts and, and yeah. not have too many people skills, then my bulk, I want to be all rounders. And then on the other end, I'll take a chance on a couple of amazing personalities oh, okay. whose academics are maybe a bit wobbly, but I can see that they're going to bring something else to the firm. But few on either side, bulk of big all rounders. And, okay. and that's how we try and balance our intakes. That's really, that's really interesting insight, actually. And I think, um, I've spent quite some time and, and one of the reasons I do this is also to try and break that idea that your job as an accountant is going to be sitting behind a desk in a quiet little <laughs> office somewhere on your own. Yeah. And the idea that as an accountant, you're not expected to be or not going to be a people person. You know? <laughs> Whereas the, especially yeah. <laughs> during auditing, I, I kind of feel you need to be even more of a people person than someone else because when you pitch up at someone's company as an auditor they don't like you (laughs) (laughs) you You gotta win them over kill them with kindness you do you know they they, you you take up their time you take up Mm. an office they have to run around and answer your stupid queries that they don't really understand what you're asking for and sometimes you don't even understand what you're asking for um and you have to keep going back to them and and they hate you you know like because it's like they still have their job to do and now on top of this they've got to run around after you fine yeah um so you really do have to be a people person to as you say to win them over and go like yeah you need to be happy to have me here and yeah so um your people skills as you say it's it's your technical skills on it's not that your technical skills are not important but as a whole your ability to interact with people to be you know friendly engaging that is Mm. very very important and i think um Let's be honest, most accounting personalities are by nature a little more introverted, yeah. which means that we do struggle with those difficult conversations. You know, we Definitely. do struggle and you get into second year, now you have to supervise the first year and then, yeah. you know, they're not really doing their work the way that you need them to. Are you How actually you? able to sit down with another human being and go, your work's not really up to standard? because that is a hard yeah, conversation to have hard. no it is and i think where you find most trainees um struggle is is ex- exactly those conversations but most firms will definitely guide you train you give yeah. you the resources so you're not just kind of dumped into that role yeah. as you progress through your articles there's certain sort of staggered training yeah. courses that you go on that equip you for that and you yeah. do have a mentor that will help you with those initial tough decisions yeah. uh, discussions that you have to have so hopefully you aren't just um put in the deep end but it's definitely a, a skill set that some people like you say don't always just have naturally no, they're not no, always no. born with it no. but it is something you can learn and develop and i think yeah. what's also good is is often our managers will say you know i remember how a manager mentored me when i was in first yeah. year and it's either a positive or a negative experience but either experience they will learn from yes. and as a manager they will draw from either yeah. experience that's not how i'm going to do it to my trainees yeah. or that's exactly how i want to yeah. do it to my yeah, trainees. Yeah. and so you're learning those skills through yeah. your own experiences as yeah. well. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's important um, to, to be aware of this. And I, you know, for, for me, my intention is mm. whether you're studying your first year and articles are three years off, um, I want you to be aware that your people skills are important. So, yeah. you know, um, in your spare time, I would like you to be reading books on personal growth and leadership and management and yeah, personality styles and assess your personality styles and think about this stuff so that mm. you're more prepared for these types of things. And I, and I also want to clarify, you know, like you said, different levels and different points in your training contract, you're going to have access to different types of training. Let's just yeah. be honest about that. That depends on which firm you're at. You yes. know, like that's not a, that's not a given. That's not necessarily no. going to be yeah. depending on the firm and depending on the culture, mm-hmm. depending on the, just True. the size and the, the resources that the True. firm has. Um, you may actually be chucked in the mm. deep end with, you know, where there true. are yeah. only three clerks in the office. 
you know, no, that is very true. Happen. So I think it's, it's also when you're looking at firms and you're going, well, you know, there's a, they, be aware. And perhaps as you know, when you're in your interview and they're going, do you have any questions for us? It's a good question to ask. Like what yeah. on auditing training will I get? Like, you know, do you guys have leadership training, management training, soft skill training, mm. et, cetera, et cetera, because that, you know, it's very stressful to try and figure that yeah. stuff out on your own. One, if you're not even aware that it exists. And two, if you don't have <laughs> some kind of mentorship, some kind of training, some kind of help of, yeah. here's how to have a difficult conversation with someone. That doesn't necessarily definitely. come that naturally. So no, um, it's, good that, it's good that your firm does have that, but let's just be honest, it's not necessarily a given. Yeah. <laughs> not that is true. Given. I didn't think of that. <laughs> Yeah. We're so used to it. <laughs> it, it is, and it's, yeah. it is. It's great, and I, I definitely over the years I've seen far more focus um, from firms on that, and I definitely mm. think it's an indication of the increased importance and the increased prioritization around around that, which is which is great. Um, you know, where I now start seeing quite a few firms are you know sort of start the trainings off with personality yeah. assessments and you know like so understand who you are and understand your strengths mm. and weaknesses reading others reading others and da, da, da. Mm. and and that's really really great um you know it, it is really really good but it, that doesn't stop you from doing that in advance you know to, yeah. to think about these things you know to think about these things before so Definitely. again that leads nicely into into the next the next component of that um that question is i'm a full time student you know, I, I started my university, I started my studying straight out of, uh, out of school and yeah. I've never worked before. I didn't do VAC work because I didn't have the opportunity or whatever the case is. And now I start, you know, I need to put my CV together. Yeah. I don't, haven't got work experience. Okay. What are you looking for on, on someone's CV? Like what type of things should they be putting on there if under work experience they've got zero? So I think work experience can show you some things, but you can also gain those same competencies that we're looking for in team sports, in group assignments, in any leadership positions you might have had at school, even not grade one or two, like grade 12. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be surprised what we see. Um, but, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, if, if you know that firms are looking for people who are team players, good communicators, I mean, you could put Toastmasters or something like that on debating. Um, that'll at least show me that you're a keen communicator. So work experience is great. And, and I don't just limit that to VAC work. I really like it when people have experience in the hospitality industry. So waitressing, yeah. farming. I think yeah. when someone is complaining about their food and you've got to figure it out and make them happy so you get that tip, True. you're learning client relationships Absolutely. there. And Absolutely. that is a really key skill. So people often are like, oh, you know, if it's just a part-time waitressing job, I'm not going to put it on there. That's but important. That's, yeah. It's very important. And it shows me that you can time manage while you've been studying if you've yeah. been doing a job yeah. like that. Yeah. So for me, you know, no experience like that should be left off. Mm. Um, but I just want to also say something about CV. So mm. there's a couple of important things around that. So most firms that you will apply to will have an ATS or what's called an applicant tracking system where you are required to put in all the essential details that we need. And then you upload your CV as well. So I'm not by any means saying that the CV is not important, but a lot of what we ask for are in those questionnaires when you're doing the online application. Right. So it's as important to spend as much time answering those things um, to the best of your ability as it is to put together a killer CV. And when we talk about a killer CV, um, guys, if you're going to tell me that you've got attention to detail, make sure your punctuation is correct and your spelling is correct <laughs> and your cell phone number has enough digits and, um, you know, I can actually see how to contact you. You'd really be amazed at the lack of attention to detail I see in so many CVs. And that is my first impression of you. And that doesn't leave a really good first impression. Um, little things like just PDFing your CV, CV and making it into a PDF version rather than a Word doc so I can see all your grammatical errors and your spelling errors that you even had a red line under and still didn't fix. <laughs> so these are just some pet peeves of mine, but right. I can guarantee but it you is important. Are, yeah. it's important because when you're looking at hundreds of applicants, and in fact, we get thousands mm. and you're selecting only the top few, Little things like that tell me about who you are as a person yeah. before I've even met you. Yeah. So those are really important things right off the bat to get right. right. And it's, your CV is going to get you in the door. Um, yeah. So if you don't get that right, you're limiting the opportunity that you, you're um, to get in the door. So yeah. those are just yeah, a couple yeah. of things. 
That's that's really that, that's really interesting, and I think um, I kind of want to come back a little more to some of the bits and pieces about you know CV cool. specifics, which which which, which is cool. But um, I think it's it's important for 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 students to understand, or for people that are applying and, and putting CVs together and going through the application mm -hmm. process, that what you're looking for is is some kind of representation of who you are as a person because exactly. even though you're going to be coming in as an audit clerk you bring your whole personality to the office you know and you yeah. bring your whole personality and your whole being into wherever you are you yeah. take yourself with you wherever you are so Definitely. if you have a sense of humor if you you know if you're patient if you have a sense of humor uh, whatever the mm. case is that's interesting to know because it gives me an impression of who you are as an individual and yeah. Um, I often have students who say to me, you know, like I don't have any work experience and I go, okay, do you have, you know, are you involved in like church activities or in your yeah. community? And they're like, but that's not relevant. You know, yeah, you know, I do, um, you know, Sunday school uh, at, at yeah. church. I go, that is relevant because you're dealing with totally. other people and you may be yeah. teaching and you may be guiding and you may be mentoring and you may, that is important because it gives me an indication Definitely. of your personality. Yeah. That's a really good point. I mean, I think there's two sort of paragraphs or maybe three that I'd encourage people to have on their CVs that not everyone always does. So, yes, you're going to have all your normal biographical details, your academic history, all those good things. But right up front, it would be really nice to also know what it is that you're looking for. Because we also don't just um, have psycho training contracts. We've got a whole bunch of things. So a little summary paragraph or an objective up the top. Say, I'm actually looking for this. I'm looking for a bursary. I'm looking for back work. This is why. This is why I'm passionate about this route. Those sorts of things. Just summing up in a paragraph who you are, why you're applying for this role. And then I always talk to um, developed abilities as well. So we spoke about that a little earlier. So the, the things outside of your academics that you can yeah. bring to the table. So kind of like you would answer in an interview question, but just putting a paragraph of that yeah. um, in your CV. And, you know, you don't need to put your hobbies as, you know, tennis or hiking or whatever, because that's not really relevant. But tell yeah. me how that makes you you or yes. do you, yeah. you know, mental yeah. kids and yeah. help them do the hiking club or whatever you yeah. know that's the important yeah. stuff yeah yeah absolutely um so i think I, I remember when when i was in in college you know we won't discuss how many years ago um <laughs> and they were like you know this is the format of your cv and it was mm. You know, fair enough, it was back in the day. Um, so, you know, the, the classic formats of the CV, you know, you start with your personal details, your ID number, and, da, 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 and yeah. so your first page is like stupendously boring. Um, yeah. And, you know, and then, you know, we're, uh, and then you move into academic background, work experience, da, da, da. and then, mm -hmm. then there was like a very tiny little piece of like other stuff. Stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> if you're looking at a CV, and, and I, I understand and so you know the, you go through an application process where you have predefined mm. questions that you need to yeah. ask fine but now let's talk about the cv itself if i put a more creative cv together and i have you know stuff that's not under those specific headlines you know if mm -hmm. i kind of have a little paragraph that says you know um books that i've you know books that i've read that I find really interesting. I um, love that. You know, where you can kind of go, you know, I read so-and-so's, you know, biography and this is what I got yeah. from it. You know, not Harry Potter. We're not interested in Harry <laughs> No, Potter, <laughs> no I yeah. totally love that. So, so, I mean, I might, I think, I, I think it's safe to say that most people will love that. If I you're agree. applying to a firm where maybe there's a 77 year old CA who's looking at it, he might not love it so much. But I think, <laughs> I think generally we look at so many CVs. If you can make it unique and visually appealing to me, you're yeah. already standing out in the crowd. So I'm going to give you two tips. Okay. <laughs> They're yeah, in word, well, not you, your students, but well, in I, word, I, I represent the students. <laughs> there you go. So in word, there's a whole bunch of resume templates. If you type yes. resume, yes. Um, and everyone uses those, which is fun. It's great. But there's a free platform online yes. called Canva. It's a design yes. tool and Are it has resume. Oh, good, me too. <laughs> and it's got resume templates in there. They bring a bit of color in. Um, it's got a slightly different format yes. on some of them. Yes. And I love, I mean, I'm just maybe quirky like this, but I love it when people put like little icons like for like their phone number and this. It just shows that you're yes. giving your CV some love and care and attention. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. don't need to go all out graphic designer, but just something a little bit different is really great. Yeah. It, it makes you stand out as being unique. 
yeah. um, and that you really put time and effort into this, that you're taking the, the process yeah. seriously. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm a sucker for that. Um, in fact, I even remember this one CV. She's a second year trainee with us now. Um, and she had a pretty tough Asian name to pronounce. And she had her full name and then underneath she had, but you can call me Cindy and my name's Cindy. So I remember her. <laughs> but like, you know, just quirky little things like that. Um, if you go by a nickname, do that. But you yeah. can call me so-and-so. You know, yeah. it just it just shows yeah. a bit of your personality yeah. Um, yeah. and makes you just more relatable. Yeah. So there's, uh, um, I, because of the stuff that I do, et cetera, I've, if you Google interesting resumes or interesting CVs or oh, yeah, different CV so points, there. there's tons of mm. platforms and examples and yeah. um, some of them are paid for services, you know, where they give you templates of dozens of yeah. very unique, you very do different yeah. You don't need to pay for them, but there's a lot of no. free stuff as well. And there I think is. even if you're, you're kind of going, look, I don't want to put hearts and, you know, smiley faces on my CV, which, you know, mm, fair enough. Fine. Yes. <laughs> um, but just take a look at a whole bunch of them for the types of, questions and the types of topics and the types of things yeah, that, you. you know, that you could include. And um, yeah, instead of just sort of going, this is my hobby and this is, you know, um, that, that w why not put down, you know, books that you've read, you know, that relate really to your career awesome. or your personal growth mm. and, and not just, you know, I read this book cause I'm, I'm super fancy and I'm so intelligent. This is what I learned um, from it. But like, what did you get from that? Mm. And, you know, mm. so um, I'm, I'm happy to hear that because I think that, you know, the days of the word documents and the, I'm, yeah. it's just, it's so <laughs> uh, what is, so, you know, uh, we, we all kind of know you should have this introduction at the top of your CV and it's like, you know, this is about me and, you yeah. know, so we're talking about being more creative and, and everything. So like slightly different tangent, what is the most irritating sentence that you see all the time that makes you want to like go, like, I'm going to kill you. It's not even a sentence. It's one word peruse i hate that <laughs> word <I'm> like, <laughs> like do you think i'm leisurely sitting by the pool perusing your cv on my day off i can't handle that word I, I, it drives me insane and also talk like in your cv like you speak now, don't whatsapp talk with like no, a no, baby no. talk or, you know like don't yeah. shorten things but don't use a word like peruse that you would never use in real yeah, life you, in a you sentence you had to no. google how to spell peruse you did exactly not yeah. i just hate that word <laughs> And also, if you do not know how to spell curriculum vitae, call it a CV or Google how to spell it because that drives me insane. The peruse and mis like incorrectly spelled curriculum vitae, two pet peeves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> but it's true. I think my worst, you know, when my worst is I am passionate. That's my worst. I can't stand that because it's like one of those things where you know you have to say it and everybody says it. But most people, like, you have no idea what that means. Mm. Um, so I, I like, when I give students advice, I'm like, just avoid that like the plague. And if, if you yeah. do want to talk about, you know, stuff that you're excited about, then you're going to need to expand on that a little bit. Because everybody knows that when you're going to see anything, and there's a few things you put on. One, I'm passionate about what I do. I love um, reading. And then I ask yeah. you what book you've just read and you hit a blank. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want to tell you that I've just finished Fifty Shades of Grey for the last week. <laughs> <laughs> I read it. Um, and the other one is uh, I'm a team player. Mm. That, Show think, me how. Tell me how. Me, yeah. If you don't have some kind of discussion around that, then um, yeah, I'll like don't just be careful about the cliches that you know mm. people want to hear, but you can't back up with some kind of discussion around this is what I'm passionate about, or you yeah. know, I'm passionate about my work is like. Ugh, makes me want to vomit. I can't stand that because it just tells me nothing about you except for the fact that yeah. you've just written down what you think I want to hear. Exactly. Like, that's, exactly. that's it. What do you think is the toughest interview question that students struggle with the most when they come to interviews that they're absolutely not prepared for? It's, it's a funny one and you would not think it, but the very first one, tell me about yourself. People cannot always answer that question. And, and it seems bizarre. It seems bizarre. But they will launch into, I'm studying accounting and in my last test, I got X amount of percent and this is why. Yeah, that's, right. that's not a, who you are. Like, sometimes they're so over analytical about what we're trying to get from that question when I'm just trying to break the ice. I mm. want to know, I've got two siblings. They're younger than me. I have to mm. be their role model. Mm. Um, I'm, I don't know. I like tennis or I like whatever. Mm. Like, 
it's literally don't read too much into it. Like it's there mm. to break the ice. It's there for me to get to know who you are as a person. Right. And so often people are just so caught off guard by it that they yeah. don't really know yeah. how to answer that. Yeah. And I know it seems bizarre, but no, no, no. I, I understand. And again, it's also because you know when you're coming in and and you're inexperienced or whatever, your mm. idea is that this person wants to know who I'm going to be as an article clerk. You know that. Yeah. Who I'm an, yeah. as an accountant. Yeah. You know, like, so I need to, I need to answer that in terms of my definition as my career and my studies. Mm. Um, and, and sometimes we just want to know who you are. Yeah, it's the beginning of a conversation, you know. 100%. Uh, yeah, so that, that's a very, so yeah, when, when you're thinking about your, your interview, it's like, give some thought to how you would mm. answer that question. Like, you know, who, yeah. who am I? Um, and, yeah. and talking about interview preparation, I mean, I think, whatever firm you're applying to, you've got to know that there's certain competencies that we're looking for. And some of them I've mentioned previously, but you're going to get a question about your communication skills. You're going to get a question about your team ability. Um, So you can prepare for an interview by going in with a couple of stories or scenarios that you can use no matter what the question is. So a good example would be a team assignment that has gone horribly pear-shaped. Someone didn't do their bit on the last minute, the printer broke, you had to ask for an extension. That you can talk to teamwork, you can talk to working under pressure, you can talk to a question around um, picking up the slack when maybe others don't do what they should. Yeah. So think about real life scenarios that you've experienced, uh, disappointments, failures, picking yourself up from a test that went badly, passing with an A at the end of the t- semester. You can use those scenarios for multiple different questions that come your way, but always have a few in your pockets and always think about what am I trying to tell in this story? So there's a a technique called the star technique that is often spoken about when answering an interview question so that you come across as structured and not too rambling in your story. (laughs) So situation, task, action, and results. So you can paint the picture. Tell us the situation you were in. Yeah. What was the task at hand? Was it an right. assignment? What yeah. was the actions that you took to get okay. the group across the yeah. finish line? And what was the result? So okay. what was the end result? Right. And it just tells the interviewer the quest, well, the, the answer or paints yeah. the picture from beginning yeah. to end in a structured way. Yeah. And also, it also helps you know when to stop. Because I think another thing that students sometimes do when they're nervous, and I oh. do it too, I talk fast and I talk lots. Yes. <laughs> and you we sometimes can... You can talk yourself out of an interview by talking too much. Yeah. So it's important to know when to stop. And that right. structure can sometimes um, help you to know how to tell your, your yeah. story, how to answer the question, but also help you know when to stop. Stop waffling. Yeah. So one, of, one of the bits of advice that I give, I give people is if they offer you tea or coffee or a glass of water, take it. Take it. Because one of the things when you're nervous is you speed and you want to answer things quickly and you like, but it's really good to slow down. Yeah. So when someone asks you something, it's really good to reflect so that you actually kind of get your thoughts in order, especially if you do have a bit of a structure, you know, so if you kind of go, I quite like the idea of the star thing. I mean, you don't have to be perfect. So don't sit there on your feet. No, no, no. (laughs) Rehearsed. No, no. (laughs) Okay, but... So it's a really good idea to, to just slow down. And when the person yeah. asks you a question, um, you know, and, and one of the ways that you can do that is to take a sip of water because yes. that just gives you a little bit of a couple a of seconds to slow Definitely. down and like, okay, yeah. you know, my answer. And don't, yeah. don't be afraid to slow the process down. Yeah. You know, by, like, that's a, yeah, that's an interesting question. Yeah. Um, but that, the interviewer is not expecting you to bash out, you know, yeah. the solution um, as fast as possible. So yeah. um, another thing you can do, but I wouldn't do it more than once because it becomes a bit annoying as an interviewer is if you really just need a couple more seconds to think, you'll be like, that's an interesting, interesting question. I just want to th- check that I understand it correctly. So what yeah, you're saying is, and then repeat it back to them. Yes. Um, and they'll be like, yes, yes, that is what I'm understanding. But you've bought yourself another 10 seconds to Absolutely. actually think about, but, but don't do that. Yeah, like, yes, I do that. I was wondering, can you just repeat the question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't listening the first time. Uh, no, exactly. Okay, yeah. how exactly. many times have you been in an interview where the applicant has pulled out their cell phone and answered stuff it's happened. I won't say it hasn't really. happened. So people no. know, like, 
keep your cell phone in your bag generally it does sometimes happen though and guys another really important thing is the interview starts at receipt it starts actually when you walk in the building because I'm going to ask our receptionist how you treated them. I'm going to check, oh, did they greet you nicely to the security oh. guard? Um, the MD could be walking past her meeting and see you chewing your gum and lying on the couch half asleep. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the interview is not just with me. That's so so also when I walk up to reception to greet you, stand up. I'm not going to pull you out of the chair with a handshake. And that sometimes happens. Yeah. Be on point from right. that moment right. um, that you walk into our building because yeah, it's, it's not just about what you say in those four walls. Yeah. Um, it's about everything yeah. that happens before and after as well. Right. Even from phoning you to set up the interview. Yes. Um, do you have a weird ringtone that I have to listen to some adverts? Or do you have, you know, an inappropriate voice um, message service? Or, no, I mean, we've, we've seen and heard it all. <laughs> so, I, know, I, can, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. So really just think about the impression that you're creating from the beginning of the process all the way to the end. Do you stalk them online? Do we stalk them online? Do you go and look at their Facebook profile? Do you look at their LinkedIn? Sometimes. Do you go yeah, them? We, a lot of firms have a, a policy that you have to before making an offer. Um, if there's anything that I have area or cause for concern on, I will. Um, so yeah, I do think it's important to have a clean social media profile. Um, some firms, like I say, it's compulsory that yep. they do check check you. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's it's always just good to to make yeah. sure that you've got a yeah yeah. A good have you ever plan. have you ever been on the verge of saying okay, I think I'll hire that person, and then gone through their social media stuff yeah. and gone never mind. Yes, it's happened once. It's happened. Um, yeah. It's happened when yeah. I, I don't want to give too many specifics, no, but okay. yeah, it does no, exist. it's happened. Yeah, it, it does, does exist. exist. Yeah. Okay. Um, about two years ago, for a manager position, actually. Um, we checked something online and it didn't line up to what the CV was saying. And yeah, we didn't make the offer and we were five we're minutes from doing it. Wow. Mm. It does happen. It does okay. happen. <laughs> so let's talk about the difference between big four firms and mm. everybody else. And I think I okay. want to clarify very quickly that mm. it's not big four, everybody else. You know, people yeah. kind of think there is a firm number five. You know, and, and number five is not over there. Yeah. You know, the firms are not gap like is, big and everyone else. The gap is yeah. a lot smaller than it seems. So, so I just want to clarify that for, for people. Yeah, first. definitely. Um, so you've worked in both of them, which is, which is great. So shall mm -hmm. we discuss the differences a little bit? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, there's also, like you said, the gap is definitely closing, but a big four firm in Polokwane is a fraction of a small firm in Cape Town or in Johannesburg. Okay, so there's okay. also those differences, geographical differences. Um, so yeah, I mean, I always say to students, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, just like when you choose a spouse or a varsity or a degree, you are choosing what's going to work for you personally. Mm. So someone will say like, should I choose big four or, or a mid-tier firm or a really tiny firm? If I don't know you well, I'm not best place to advise you on that until right. I sit down and have a conversation yeah. with you and find out what's important to you and what you want out of your life and out of your career. Yeah. Um, and so having worked with both, I, I honestly can promote both depending mm. on the type of person you are mm. and what it is that you want out of, um, out of life. Mm -hmm. So for me, the big four firm that I worked in, I worked in Port Elizabeth. Um, so it was a small firm within a bigger company. Mm -hmm. And I loved that because it was a smaller environment and being in HR, I could really interact with people yeah. and get to know their stories and do what I love most. Um, but in a bigger city, working in a slightly smaller environment, which now has grown so much, served that purpose for me a few years ago. But yeah. now I'm at a point in my career where I really want to grow and do different things. And so the size of our firm now mm. is giving me the ability to do that again. Yeah. So I've kind of had different scenarios in my life. And I think students will have the same thing. Yeah. You know, there'll be times where yeah. female students want to start focusing on having kids and growing a family. Mm. And so something different might work for you then. But yeah. I digress. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> big... it, it is. I think the important thing is that there are things when, when we discuss and I do the same, when someone asks yeah. me that question, I'm going to say, here's some things you should consider. 
Mm. I can't answer them totally. for you, but think about this and think about yeah. that. Like, like you say, for, 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 do you want a family? You know, are you planning mm. on having a family? Da, 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 da. Do you want to move overseas? Do you want like what 100%. experience? Um, yeah. you know, I, I kind of say for, you know, for, for students who want to open their own business, for example, then it's probably yep. a good possibility you should go to a medium firm because exactly. you're going to interact more with smaller businesses themselves. Yeah. And yeah. You know, you'll, you'll get a behind the scenes perspective on what smaller businesses look like. Like Definitely. you don't want to audit a bank um, for nine months of the year. The idea of your future is running your own business because it gives you no indication of what it's like 100%. to run your own business as channel, et cetera. So fine. Um, I, 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 I totally agree. I think um, one of the questions that, that students worry about and the reason that this is such a thing mm. is if I do my articles at a firm that's not the big four, will yeah. that impact my career? Am yeah. I going to be a lower level yeah. professional or not? So from what I've seen, no, um, unless it's in a specific industry that you want to break into. So let's use like banking or investment right. banking as, as a good yeah, example. If you go to Joe Bloggs and Co auditing firm uh, and you're one of one audit yeah. trainees, yes, it's a career it's limiting struggle. move. Yeah. You're not going to get hired by yeah. Investec next week. Okay. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so it's just, it's not going to happen. So yes, there are instances where it would be, but you know, there's so, so few and far between. And that mm. example is so radical because that's how radical it would kind of have to be yeah. for it to be limiting. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. One of our partners in tears, we did a webinar um, last week with him and he was telling me something I didn't know about him. So he did his articles at BDO. Um, and when he went across on secondment, he, the, he wanted to go to Cayman Islands uh, with mm. his wife who got a placement mm. there. And so he got a position with EY because that's who had vacancies. Yeah. Yeah. And he was the only non big four yeah. trainee to get one of those positions. Yeah. And when they were looked at who they wanted to retain for a longer period, he was the only one mm -hmm. who they asked to stay. So, you know, it really, it, I don't think it is for 98% of mm. people. I don't think it will be a mm. career limiting in any way. Um, but there is a point where maybe too small is too small, yeah. um, depending yeah. on what it is you okay. want to do with your life. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because I think that's the big thing is, like mm. it's, it's, it's the fear around what if it's the wrong decision? You know, what if yeah. I go to uh, wh whoever, you know, BDO mm -hmm. and then that's now stamped I'm on my for life. It's not gonna, <laughs> you know, I'm doing for life. It's not, you know, it's not gonna. And I think yeah. that was, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to emphasize that um, mid tier is not here and big four is over there. Yeah. The gap, the gap has over. shrunk. I mean, and it's, in yeah. reality, dude, you know, again, you take yourself with you. So it's very much around what mm. you take from your experience. You could yeah. go to a big four firm and, you know, suck at everything that you do and mm. people hate you and, you know, come yeah. out of that and have a terrible, have a terrible experience and not be able to find a job anywhere because it's about Definitely. who you are as well and what you take. Yeah. From. No, totally. And, and, you know, kind of leading from that, one of the things I always say to students during their articles or trainees during their articles is, Think of every client that you're going to in those three years as a job interview, because so many mm. of our trainees end up in commerce working yes. for a client yes. that spotted them as a great first year trainee, mm. built a relationship yeah. and assessed their growth over two, three years, um, and then swooped in on them the minute they were finished their articles. And so you're building a network during your three years, not just with your clients, which is super important, but also with your partners that are, active, are going to act yeah. as Champions, they're going to refer you to their clients or their friends in business for yeah. positions later, yeah. or if you start your own thing, you know, as a client for, for you later. And then also with your peers. So when you do articles, you get to know the most fascinating people who are brilliant and bright and entrepreneurial. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and who knows, 10 years down the line, they might be a potential client really? for you in whatever oh, business no. you're doing. You're so, so right. And I think this, this yeah. runs into the, the flows really nicely into another, another yeah. topic we wanted to discuss is um, the importance and understand that from day one, you're building your network. You know, this is not just a job that you're going to leave and never you're in a, yeah. in what essentially is quite a small industry. Bubble, yeah. Yeah, it's smaller than you think. Um, mm. There are only, there are less than 50,000 CAs in South Africa. So it's yeah. actually not that big. It's a tight knit and community. It is a very tight knit community. People, so mm. um, yeah, I've I've had experiences. You know, I mean, I've I've been qualified for 
a while now. We're in sex. <laughs> yeah, I've been qualified for a while, but it's, it's amazing. You do not know who you're going to work for, who's going to yeah. work for you, uh, who you're going to be applying for a job with. Uh, yeah. you, you, don't, you don't know that, and you want to mm. make sure that you never burn bridges along definitely and linking hard. back quickly to the interview don't ever um bad mouth any prior experience oh, yes employer that you've yes. had because man it's a small tight circle and yeah it's True. very quick for us to connect the dots and pick up the phone to someone that we know that's worked at that place or was a friend that you've had a briar with on friday and <gasps> yeah it's just not something you must do but yes the circle True. is small and often what we'll see is that i'll go to a partner and i'll say hey look at the cv and they're like oh interesting they did articles at x y and z and i don't know um Nasna, I know it's the partner at that place. Mm -hmm. I studied with them. Phone mm -hmm. them up. No, no, no. They might not be the reference on your CV, but we're going to get a reference. You know, so yeah. it is. It's really important to remember that your network is everything and yeah. building a positive network and then keeping yeah. track of that network. So, I mean, I don't know what people did before LinkedIn. I mean, Rolodex cards or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, but like, I know. go, uh -huh. you know, if you have a great um, interaction with a client or if you attend a seminar and the speaker was great, um, yeah. connect yeah. with them. Yeah. Like Not just, on Facebook, people. No. Not on, <laughs> I don't. I have the same thing with students. I, I, I must have about 3,000 ignored friend requests on Facebook. Yeah, students, LinkedIn. You know, like, dude, LinkedIn, happy. Mm, I am happy. not your friend. So, you know, when you want to connect with someone as a, as a network, be very mm. careful to break the line between yeah. social and Definitely. formal. And I think, you know, again, this kind of leads into the next topic that we want to discuss yeah. is generational differences. There yeah. is a difference. There is a generational difference, which is totally understandable. Um, I don't like the idea of thinking that one generation is good versus bad. No. People are very keen to badmouth millennials. I don't buy that at all. Um, yep. There's, you know, millennials face challenges in a world that, you know, previous generations did not have, have. did not face. So, you yeah. know, millennial is, is trying to navigate a world that has never existed before with mm. rules that don't exist and don't happen with a bunch of, you know, people who don't understand the types of challenges, yeah. economy, et cetera, Agreed. et cetera. So what types of stereotypes, generational issues do you come across and what should yeah. students and potential clerks article, what should they be aware of? Yeah. So I think it's important just to acknowledge that the differences are there. Yeah. Um, and, and interestingly enough, this year in induction, we presented that it's the first, that the intake this year, who are, I suppose, what, like 23? 22 yeah, 23 yeah, they yeah they are um they brought with them the fourth generation into the workplace so never before have there been four generations in the workplace at one time um so they've now so you've got your baby boomers gen x millennials and gen z they are they were the first years of gen z's coming in um so it was wow. quite, I know, I know. Um, so it was quite interesting to, yeah. to chat to them around that. And I agree. I think this generation coming into the workplace has had challenges that yeah. none of us have had to experience. Yeah. And so we also did this training for our more senior staff. I won't call them older. But um, saying, you know, just like you see them in X, Y, and Z yeah. way, they see you in see this them. way. Yeah. yeah. And, and somehow find a way to acknowledge the difference, but also to maybe just give them them a break and to understand yeah. the context in which they are living yeah so yeah i mean you'll find in, in most firms there are your more senior people who are probably of the baby boomer sort of generation yes. who yeah. are very traditional um very structured very yeah. strict yeah. don't hand out please and thank yous and high fives for yeah. doing your job yeah. who expect you to do it who expect you to put in the hours um and who aren't going to leave a chocolate on your table with a flower saying thank you um, and so you need to take the thank yous when they come because when they do that means you've really shot the lights out yeah. and be proud of yourself for that yeah. um but also not go grouching around you know yeah. because someone didn't say thank you for applying to yeah. someone's email you yeah. know so yeah. you've got to just realize that, that that is the way in which they work yeah. um and then you know then you've also got your a lot of partners who are maybe in their 40s mid 40s yeah. um who would be maybe a little bit more tech savvy very career yeah. oriented very fast paced want to get the job done um but also quite flexible in the way in which they manage things so they're yeah. not going to spell out to you a list of 20 steps to get your job done no no, no. Say, hey, they figure this out 
do it yourself. Do yeah. this. Yeah, they want the end result to be achieved. And yeah. sometimes without that guidance, people feel a little bit, you know, lost. and shaken and, and, and yeah. lost. Yeah. So on, you know, on the generational stuff, um, mm. one of the things that, you know, that, that, that I think is important to realize is when, when you join an organization um, and you are inexperienced, and there is an element of suck it up, sunshine. Mm. Like, it's not, you know, don't go in there expecting that people around you are going to make uh, allowances for everything. People are as understanding yeah. as they can be. But let's be honest, yeah. until you've proven that you add value, you are a little bit of a non-entity in 100%. a place that's under stress, deadlines, people have got mm. work to do, um, you know, people are very busy and, you know, people are generally very open to someone coming and going, can you give me some assistance on this? Can you help? Can you give me some guidance? Yeah. I'm not sure. And that's great. I absolutely yeah. encourage all of that stuff. But when you're joining and you're new and you do kind of need to prove yourself before you're mm -hmm. going in asking for special leave, complaining about stuff, you know, yeah. everything's not fair because in all honesty, it says more about you than the environment. Mm. You know, no, so you kind of, one of the things I say to, um, to, to my students is be very careful who you confide in. Mm. Your work is not the place for gossip. It's not yeah. the place for bitching. If you're unhappy about something, be quiet and think yeah. and try and find someone outside of your organization to, mm. to try and give you some stuff to think about it and make sure that you find a way of dealing with it as professionally as mm. possible. Definitely. Um, because as much as your manager cares, as much as your supervisor cares, it, you know, you want to be very careful that you don't dump mm. your tears on a Monday morning because your boyfriend broke up with you over the weekend because it creates yeah. a really bad impression. And I think, again, mm -hmm. it's a little bit of a generational thing where generations, younger generations, I think are a little bit more comfortable to be a bit more open about stuff where yeah. older generations are like, that's not my business. Leave yeah. your family at home. Yeah. You know, yeah, and I think two things around that. So, you know, it's important also to try and, it, let's say it is a work issue and your manager's coming down hard and you're setting tight deadlines. It's important to look at it from their perspective and try and put yourself yeah. into their shoes because yeah. you don't know what you don't know. And one day you'll yeah. be there and you'll yeah. be like, oh, that first year didn't answer my email. And, oh. you know, and so try and, try and empathize and put yourself in their shoes and think, why is it so important that I do X, Y, and Z for this yeah. person? What, why is it upsetting them? Yeah. Um, and also... You know, as a first year, you really are a baby in the organization, if you want to use it that way. There's a lot yeah. that you don't know. And I think assumptions are so, so um, dangerous because, you know, you go into a new organization and you've been there three months and you think you know how it's supposed to all work. But you don't know what happened three years ago to, to get the, to this point or to structure the system in this way. Um, and to ask, if you're not sure, ask. Say, like, this really doesn't make sense to me. Why you guys do it this way? Or why you feel so strongly yeah. about this? You know, is there a reason? Yeah. And then inform your opinion. And if you still have valid cause to, to complain, please do. Because we also need to embrace change yeah. and we really look at how we do things. Yeah. Most organizations, I think, are very open to that. But only when you've actually tried to understand the full picture yeah. Yeah. Um, and the context of what it is that's upsetting yeah. you. I think it's, it's really important. And again, it kind of comes back to dealing with difficult situations. We're not really mm. taught how to deal with that. So we tend to keep it all inside yeah. Keep quiet about it until we just can't take it anymore. And then yeah. you know, you're, you're done. Like I just can't handle this anymore. And then yeah. all the other person sees is grief. She's just flipped. Unstable. <laughs> they're not aware She's of the That's fact, what's... Yeah, like she, exactly. <laughs> um, you mm. know, they're not aware of the fact that it's been a six month build up. Build up. Um, mm. So I think, you know, think about how to deal with it. But when something goes wrong, uh, yeah. you know, you may want to like, okay, let me keep quiet and think about it. The first time something happens, we try to figure it out. Okay. This seems to be a little bit of a trend. It's happening a little more. Um, yeah. how do I deal with this? Who do I speak to when it's at a level one? You yeah. Know, when it's at like a calm level and it's like, this is a little bit frustrating. Can I just talk to you? I'm a little bit concerned. How should I deal with the situation? What is it that I don't know? Um, you know, do you have any mm -hmm. advice for how I can deal with the situation? take it slow so that you don't mm. get to a point where you've left it underneath. And I, I mean, yeah. you know, like 
this was a this was a mistake I made when when I was doing articles. I had no guidance. I had no, mm -hmm. you know, I, I really didn't. And you know, I am an absolute idealist, which is why I'm a lecturer. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I am an absolute idealist. And so when stuff happened that I didn't understand, what unnecessary, I didn't feel was right, or whatever the case is, I got very passionate not, about it. Not to 102 yeah. seconds. <laughs> no, you know, that, that, no, it wasn't. Mm. It was gradual, but okay. I never. I didn't know how to express that. I kind of left it and left it and left it. And so it went from naught to two to four, da, 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 until eventually yeah. it got to a hundred. It may have taken six months to get there, but then I flipped and nobody knew that the previous six months had happened. So they were all like, mm -hmm. they, okay. it comes across as zero to a hundred. And then I, yeah. okay, this chick is a freak. Um, and That's I, true. I, it often happens that way. It does. But I'm like, this has been happening for six months now. Um, yeah. So, you know, that was a mistake that I definitely made, which definitely left you know, the people around me under the impression that I was like quite volatile, which <laughs> I honestly am one of the most patient people that you'll come across, but I just yeah. be quiet about it. So I think it's, yeah. it's important to understand what I'm expecting you to keep quiet about it, but yeah. think about ways to have those conversations in a calm manner when it's constructive not, manner. Yeah. When yeah. it's not the end of the line, don't wait mm. until you're ready to throw someone out the window before we yeah. have a conversation about it. You know? Definitely. Like they get some input from people around you, more experienced who are not necessarily in the firm. It's kind of yeah. what's happening. What would you advise? What should I be careful of? Talk about the stuff Definitely. because let's be honest, like articles are hard. Mm. Articles are hard. Yeah. It's a tough situation. It's a pressure cooker. Deadlines are nasty. You know, it, there's a million things going on. People are studying. People are stressed out. So let's be honest. Articles are not fun. Yeah. Like, it's not a, you know, it's, it's not a fun. It's not experience. a walk in the park. <laughs> it's not a walk in the, it's extremely valuable, but it is not mm. easy. And it is not the calculations that makes your life difficult. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. all the stuff around other stuff. That, that makes your life Yeah. Difficult. So yeah, um, I think, you know, I definitely feel that this is a conversation we could carry on forever. <laughs> that's happened. And, and I definitely see us hopefully having another conversation. Yeah, um, sure. It'll be fun. <laughs> so for, for those watching, um, if you have any specific questions or any questions that you would like us to cover in, in another, in another conversation, please leave comments um, on the post so that we can, we can address them. Um, I'm going to try and find a, a nice link for that interview, um, that little interview advice that you had for the, the so star, cool. like star. I'm to find that. <laughs> and then maybe one or two links to, um, to some CV format, CV template kind of things to, that would be awesome. Yeah. To, to, to put that in there as well. So that, um, so that we've got some more information, you can just take a look at, at CVs and different, different processes. That'd be like fun. That. Yeah. So thank you very, very much for time. and thank you for your honesty and stuff as well, because it's very easy to just, you know, to kind of go, no, 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 we're all good. We're doing fine. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to say thank you for doing this for your students. I think it's so amazing. There's so many people people who don't have people that can advise them on these things, whose parents aren't in business or whose okay. older brother isn't a CA or, sure. you know, I also like, I really went into a lot of this stuff blind and not everyone's confident enough to access the resources that they have. So yeah. just sit behind a computer and watch it yeah. as a safe space yeah. that for some people really works. So yeah, thank you for doing this. It's, oh, it was awesome to chat about it and yeah. hopefully we can do it again sometime. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoy the rest awesome. of your, enjoy the rest of your <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>